Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 10th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Big diary today, sort of related to Circle CI, but not related to the Circle CI uh, breach recently. And the diary is about, well, attackers who are searching for Circle CI configuration files. These YAML files are essentially uh, scripts that uh, tell Circle CI how to build a certain project. And yes, they may include usernames and passwords. So that's why the attackers are going after them. In the particular case that I observed in our honeypots, there were two IP addresses, both hosted on OVH and uh, likely related as they also scan for a number of similar URLs like various uh, configuration files for different uh, software. We keep seeing uh, these configuration files being looked for. It's sort of one of the more common attacks we do see in our honeypots. So make sure you properly configure these configuration files. If possible, don't keep them in the document route or at least, and maybe you want to do both, configure your web server not to actually serve these configuration files. Interestingly also that they went sort of for some backup files like with the dot back extension, which may be done in order to evade some of these filters if you were sloppy and left uh, backup files behind. And just to reiterate, this is not at all related to the Circle CI breach. So you still want to rotate your credentials if you haven't done that yet. And Amazon announced that it will now encrypt all objects stored in S3 by default. This has been an option in the past, but now that's the default setting. Uh, this essentially is you no know, encryption at rest. Uh, I compare it to encrypting your hard drive. And uh, for the most part, it would prevent the data to leak if someone would be able to sort of bypass some of the access control mechanisms. However, if an attacker does uh, steal credentials, for example, and is able to access uh, the objects as a legitimate user, then of course, uh, this kind of protection wouldn't really matter. The default setup again also implies that Amazon is managing the keys. So Amazon owns the keys. There is, however, an option uh, with uh, the Amazon S3 encryption client where you are able to encrypt data on the client before you upload the data to S3. And of course, uh, then Amazon does not have access to the keys, but it limits somewhat the use cases of uh, this client encryption. And Matrix SSL and SSL and TLS implementation for IoT devices that sort of distinguishes itself by being very lightweight. Uh, well, a new version was released in order to fix a buffer overflow vulnerability. As typical for buffer overflow vulnerabilities, this could lead to remote code execution. However, at this point, only a denial of service has actually been shown feasible. If you don't want to update, uh, only TLS 1.3 is affected. So you could disable TLS 1.3 and just leave it as TLS 1.2, which for all practical purposes is good enough, in particular sort of in the IoT world, and it will uh, block the path to exploit this vulnerability. And Palo Alto disclosed an interesting vulnerability, CVE 2022-23529, that they found in the Auth0 uh, JSON web token uh, library. Auth0 creates uh, this open source library. It's written in JavaScript and as such distributed via NPM and, well, extremely popular with about 20,000 uh, projects using uh, this library. Of course, JSON web tokens are in general very popular. So no big surprise that uh, this library is popular as well, in particular, as it comes from a trusted source uh, Auth0. Now, the problem here is that an attacker could use this library to write arbitrary files uh, to the file system the function is running on. So if you're running this on a server, it could be used to write arbitrary files to that server. Further exploitation will be somewhat 
tricky but certainly possible and there is a patch available if you're using anything before 851 or 900 well uh, then you are a vulnerable well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And by the way, to celebrate the new year, I started uh, handing out stickers again on the show note page. You should find a link uh, to ask for your sticker. I limit the number that can be requested per day. So if you're too late, they may no longer be available for a particular day. Just try another day. Also, you need to be logged in to your ISC account in order to request stickers, kind of to prevent uh, some of the simple bot attacks. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.